What's up, guys? Jordan McAbee here, FantasyRacingOnline.com, and we're on to week two of the playoffs with the Federated Auto Parts 400 at Richmond. Richmond Raceway, it is a three-quarter of a mile track, 400 miles on Saturday night, which means, or 400 laps on Saturday night, which means 300-mile race. Relatively quick, quick race, uh, and we tend to see two dominators at this racetrack. So, Richmond is a short, flat track. We're looking at similar tracks. To look at similar tracks with Richmond, we're looking at Phoenix. We're looking at New Hampshire. You can throw in Martinsville. You can throw in Nashville, but they really don't compare that well. Yes, they're flat, but they don't compare that well. Especially, um, I'd say Martinsville is even less just because of, you know, it's just, if, if I was going to throw either one in, I would probably lean a little bit more toward um <clears throat> Nashville than I would Martinsville but we have a lot of data for Richmond we have a lot of data with Phoenix we have a lot of data with uh New Hampshire there's really no reason to go outside of those three we the, the thing with these short flat tracks if you watch my other video this week or if you listen to Stacking Denny's this week the podcast if you haven't make sure you do these are predictable races these aren't these aren't crazy races. We don't see a lot of crazy stuff happening. We don't see surprise dominators come out of nowhere. The only surprise we have is something like New Hampshire this year when they started the race in the rain and Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch wrecked on lap two or whatever it was. That's the biggest surprise that we have at these races. Um, it's We just don't really see that much, especially, well, especially when it comes to dominators. So you can go back to the first Richmond race this year, Alex Bowman, Typically doesn't perform well at short flat tracks. He ended up winning here at Richmond, but he didn't dominate. He led 10 laps. Like that's not dominating. Um, so, and the, and those are the only 10 laps he's led over the last two years at short flat tracks. I will note that he had 27 fastest laps in that race. So he wasn't awful, but um, you know, it's just, uh, <clears throat> it's not, the two dominators in the first Richmond race were Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and we can pretty much expect the same thing to happen Saturday night in this race as well. Um, obviously, we have, you know, looking at the starting lineup here, we have Kyle Larson on the pole, and then we have Hamlin and Truex second and third. Yes, Kyle Larson could lead some laps. He typically doesn't run very well at these short flat tracks, and we'll get into this when we get into the full breakdown. Um we got Logano who could end up dominating some Brad Keselowski, but really when looking at dominators, we're focused. It's, 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 it's a lot easier to be hyper-focused on dominators this week than it is other races because we just know who's good here and the, and all the numbers prove it. So um, let's take a look at first. Let's take a look at 750 horsepower data on this season. So eight races so far. Uh, let me get a list of those included in this data set real quick. I don't know them off the top of my head. We got Phoenix. We got Martinsville. We got Darlington, Dover, Richmond, Nashville, Loudon, and Darlington too. So those are the eight races that are included in this. Best average running position: Denny Hamlin, four point six. Next best is Kyle Larson and Kevin Harvick at seven point eight. Joey Logano, seven point nine. Ryan Blaney, eight point zero. Chase Elliott, nine point two. Martin Truex Jr., nine point four. William Byron, nine point seven. When we sort by average finish. Kyle Larson, number one at 5.5. Joey Logano, 6.4. Denny Hamlin, 6.6. Got Truex and Harvick right there in the eights. Those are the only ones that are sub 10.0 this season on uh, in the 750 horsepower package. Narrowing that down to just flat tracks, so just similar tracks to Richmond. This, this data set, three races we got. Uh, the first Phoenix race, we got the first Richmond race, and the New Hampshire race. Remember, Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch both had issues in that New Hampshire race, so their numbers are going to be a little bit off. But average running position this year on these short flats, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr. We know who's good at these racetracks. Best average finish, Joey Logano, 3.0. Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, both 5.0, Truex at 6.0, Eric Amarola 6.0. You remember back to New Hampshire. Um, we a lot of talk about Amarola before that. He ended up winning it. Kozlowski 7.0, Bowman 7.7, Blaney 8.7. Expanding that out to include 2020 
races on these short flat tracks. Best average running position, Brad Keselowski, 4.8. Joey Logano, 5.8. Kevin Harvick, 7.2. Denny Hamlin, 8.2. Chase Elliott, 8.8. Martin Truex Jr., 9.2. Eric Amarola, 10.5. I will continue to say this. We don't see many surprises. It's a lot of the same drivers always up front at these racetracks. Then it just comes down for us as DFS players nailing the dominators. We know who's going to be good here. We know who's going to finish up front. We know who's going to be fast, especially in a playoff race, because there's not going to be much crazy stuff happening like there was at Darlington last week. Going by average finish over the last two years on this track type, Joey Logano, 2.9. Just absolutely ridiculous. Brad Kozlowski, 5.1. Hamlin, 7.6. Almirola, 7.7. Kevin Harvick, 8.1. Chase Elliott, 8.1. Kyle Larson. He only had four races, so three this year in the first Phoenix race, I think, uh, last year. Yes. I want to make sure I'm right on that. Yep. Um, Truex at 9.3, Bowman to Benedetto. We know we know who's good here. It's not hard. It's not hard. So let's take a look at algorithm predicted finishing order. Of course, is Denny Ham or Truex Hamlin Logano one, two, three. All super close in the power index. There's no reason to go against these guys. They are the favorites and there, I can. I'm not going to guarantee that one of the three win, but I'm basically saying I'd be very surprised if one of those three don't win on Saturday night. I'm I'm heavy on bets with them. I bet all three of them top three. I I'm betting Logano top five at even money. I mean, all super super strong at this track type. Algorithm says Harvick's fourth, Larson fifth, Keselowski sixth, Elliott seventh, Kyle Busch eighth, Ryan Blaney ninth, Eric Amarola tenth. No real major surprises, I would say. Obviously, some of these other guys have higher upside than than the algorithm, you know, has them predicted. Christopher Bell comes to mind. Austin Dillon has been strong here at Richmond before. Alex Bowman. Um, but for the most part, we just we know we know who should finish up front, and we just don't see crazy stuff happen at Richmond. So let's just go ahead and get right into this breakdown because you know Richmond. I don't like spending a lot of time really discussing the other parts of Richmond. It's, it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not worth it. Like I said, it's not, it's not worth overthinking it. I'm going to say this every time we're at a short flat track, it's not worth overthinking it. So Kyle Bush on DraftKings, he starts 15th. He's 11,500. You know, my rule by now, I don't like overpaying for place differential. Does Kyle Bush have the possibility to dominate it's Kyle Busch. It can always happen. He's done it here before. Is it likely? I would put him on a list of, uh, you know, possible dominators. He wouldn't, I don't think he'd be top five. I'd have Hamlin, Truex, um, Logano, Keselowski, and Larson in the top five. And Kyle Busch probably sixth. Um, but even that, like, I think he can finish top five. I don't, I don't, I think it's crazy for Kyle Busch to finish top five. Is it going to get him in the winning lineup in DraftKings? No, it's not. Um, not to mention he's not good in this 750 package. It's This isn't just a small, you know, few races that, that he's having issues. This is a widespread problem for him this season. Eight races. Come down here at Kyle Busch. Eight races. Average running position of 14.9, average finish of 19.5. He's obviously better than that. He has he has upside, but he doesn't have dominating upside, in my opinion. We're just not seeing it. He finished third at Darlington in the first race. That is his only top five in the 750 package this year. Tenth at Martinsville. Eighth at Richmond. Eleventh at Nashville. Those aren't Kyle Busch numbers. He has He's better than that. But in this package, he just struggles. Now, like I said, I think he can get up there, and I think that he can, I think he can challenge for a top, possibly a top five, but I don't think that gets him into the optimal with without dominating. So, I'm I'm not gonna have a lot of Kyle Busch on Saturday night. I'll say that right now, and and in high dollar, I'm not gonna have any because the the upside of him getting ten place differential points doesn't doesn't equal the upside of 400 laps and potentially Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. leading 100 of them. It just it doesn't work out. Math doesn't work out, and I don't see it happening. So 
I don't like overpaying for place differential, and and that's worked for me quite a bit for these top guys uh, in the past. So I'm going to stick to it. There's no reason to go against it. Chase Elliott's next. He starts 13th. He's 11,200. Chase Elliott's going to be a top 10 car with top five upside, and that's about it. Similar to Kyle Busch, I don't see him dominating. Um, so Chase Elliott this year, let's just look at um, the last two years of flat track data. Chase Elliott, average running position at 8.8, average finish of 8.1. Those numbers of lead lap, lead, laps led and fastest laps have a lot, is, is heavily weighted toward his Phoenix races and Martin or not Martinsville, but, um, he had s- s- the two Phoenix races last year. He had 113 fastest laps. That means he has th- 130. Wow. 38. It's not, I can't even blame the time. I'm not tired. It's the middle of the day, but, uh, my math is off. I'm, I have too much, too much other stuff on my mind, but Chase Elliott just doesn't, he's going to get at max probably about 15 fastest laps. And he's probably not going to lead much. Can he finish top five? Absolutely. It's Chase Elliott. Is it a guarantee? No. Do I want to overpay? Do I want to pay 11200 for a guy starting 13th that just has top five upside and isn't going to dominate? No. That's just not. Again, it's, Kyle, it's like Kyle Busch. Same exact opinion with, with Chase Elliott here. Just don't see the upside. Kyle Larson's on the pole. He's 11,000. This is interesting because he struggled at this. He's, he's, he's struggled according to Kyle Larson standards at this track type. He's won here at Richmond before, but he's never put up any dominating effort. And obviously he hasn't been in, in the best equipment, but he led 53 laps in that race that he won. Let me pull up looking at, uh, well, let's just take a look at um, this. 2020 and 2021 short flat tracks. Kyle Larson, 67 fastest laps, three laps led, over four races. Go into the actual races where he got those fastest laps. 45 of those was at Phoenix this year. 45 of 67, so 22 over the other three races. The zero in the first Phoenix race, 10 at Richmond this year, and 12 at Loudoun. I'm seeing that's that's normal. The thing is, and the and the reason the reason I don't mind going with Larson on in tournaments, maybe being overweight or at least a little bit overweight, is because it's Kyle Larson. All the numbers say that Kyle Larson, this isn't the time to pick him on the pole and overpriced. I have mentioned quite a few times that you should zig while everybody else zags. Do I think Logano Hamlin and Truex will outscore Kyle Larson on Saturday night? Absolutely. But is there upside with Kyle Larson to possibly surprise dominate this race? Yes, it's Kyle Larson. Uh, what if, what if he gets the setup or they, they migrate the setup from Alex Bowman's car earlier this year at Richmond to, to Kyle Larson's car. And he, he has the track position to start. It's hard to pass. And he goes out there and he leads, you know, a hundred laps and gets 40 fastest laps. I still think he finishes top five. That's that, that, that brings the gap a little bit closer with these, with these, with Logano, Hamlin, Truex, not to mention if he leads a bunch of laps, it takes away the 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 time for those other three to get those fastest laps. So I think Larson is a. If I'm hand building lineups, I'm not putting Larson in them because I don't think it makes. I like I like Logano, Hamlin, and Truex way too much this week. If I'm building lineups with an optimizer and I'm using my projections, they're probably you're not going to get any Larson. I think you need to, I think you need to purposely hand build Larson lineups for if you're mass entering, or if you're doing a 
single entry or something. I don't I don't think Larson's going to be too is he, he's still going to get ownership because it's Kyle Larson. But I would I would put the chances of him I haven't I haven't done my projections for ownership yet, but I would put the chances of him being in the optimal lineup at probably less than 10%, honestly. Maybe right there at 10%. So that's probably where I'd want to be DFS wise in if I'm, you know, entering the big contest this week. All the numbers point to 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 Kyle Larson not being a great play on Saturday night. But it's still Kyle Larson. He did have a really, really fast car at Phoenix earlier this year. It's now the playoffs. Did they learn anything from the first Richmond race? There's a lot of factors here, but um but yeah. That's that's kind of where I'm at on Larson. I could see him being a tournament write up. I haven't written my article yet, but I could see him filling in that slot, especially right there above the three, the big three of short flat tracks. Joey Logano, he starts six. He's ten thousand seven hundred. Absolute slam dunk pick in my opinion. I think he's going to challenge for the win. If not, he's going to challenge top three. He looking at fastest laps on short flat tracks. Penske cars aren't known for fastest laps. Fourth most over the last two years. His lowest was loud and earlier this year. And if you remember that, he was fighting from two laps down and in traffic all day. He had one of the best cars that race, by the way. Other than that, his lowest is 16 in the Loudon race of last year. Every other race, Joey Logano has had at least 25 fastest laps. Phoenix, the two Phoenix races last year, the Richmond race last year, the Phoenix race this year, the Richmond race this year, he's all had, he's had over 20, 25 or more fastest laps. So I think you need to, I think you need to basically pencil him in for at least 25 fastest laps because all the numbers point to that. This is his best track type. He's starting sixth. He can win. I think there's no, there's no reason to go to not have a good amount of Joey Logano this week. Great pick. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm waiting for anybody to make a case against Logano. You look at his last seven races on this track type, fourth, third, second, third, fourth, third, first. Absolutely ridiculous. If you're going to take a stand and not go Logano, it's just because you're hoping he, he has a flat tire or something happens. Certainly possible, but in a race where very few incidents occur and where um, we just we, we see the same people up front, Joey Logano is a slam dunk. So, yeah. Denny Hamlin, he starts second. He's $10,400 on DraftKings. It's all going to come down. I think it's going to come down to who gets the lead from Larson first, him or Truex. I tend to favor Truex on at night. Denny Hamlin coming off the win. He can now, I mean, he can just go for the win. He can... He can do stupid strategy. He can do whatever he wants to get the win or to get stage points this week. I don't particularly like that with a – it can go either way on DFS, but most of the time it doesn't work out. So looking at the last two years of flat track data, short flat track data, Denny Hamlin has the most fastest laps. He also has four finishes inside the top four, three finishes of 10th or worse. Looking at, uh, where am I? At? Looking at fastest laps, seventeen in the Richmond race last year. He had eighty nine in the first race this year. Like I said, he he dominated. Him and Truex dominated the first race. Um, Hamlin had eighty nine fastest laps, along with two hundred and seven laps led. Martin Truex Jr. led for 107 laps and had 74 fastest laps. Other than that, Hamlin, Hamlin's usually good for about 30, 40 fastest laps. If he leads, he has the possibility to go higher. Yes, he starts second, but there's no reason to go against him. This is one of his best track types, um, and there's really no reason to go against him. So looking at, uh, well, we'll get to this part in a second. 
Martin Truex Jr. starts third. He's 10,200. He's going to be a very popular pick, and he should be because this is his best track type. He's best at night. He um, finished second here last year. He's finished third or better in three of the last seven short flat tracks. He fifth most fastest laps. Um, solid amount of laps led. Looking at fastest laps, the only concern you have to have is he, Truex can, has actually disappointed um, quite a bit over the last two years. So he had 52 fastest laps at Phoenix this year. He had 74 in the first Richmond race. Other than that, 16 or lower in the other uh, five short flat tracks. If you're going to take a stand on Truex this week, I think you go under. Underweight on him, you go, you build a lineup with Logano and Hamlin or or something like that. Because I do think, I think you're, I think the optimal build is going to come out of two of these three guys right here. Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. Maybe even all three, depending on how um, it all shakes out. But Truex starting 30s, 10,200. He should be the highest owned I'm going to guess he's going to be the highest owned of these three. He might be the highest owned on the slate, to be honest with you. So I would probably go underweight, but still but still have plenty of exposure. I mean, it's Martin Truex Jr. I, I, I said, I've been saying for the last two weeks that I think he's going to win this race. Um, the thing with Truex, uh, I, I mentioned the disappointment and fastest laps over the last seven short flat track races flat track races. Richmond's different though. Truex is really, really, really good at Richmond. Since 2017, looking at the number of fastest laps and I'll just, I'll type this out so there's, it's actually on the screen. Most fastest laps per race Got Truex at 42.3, Kez at 38, Hamlin at 30.7, Harvick at 27.5, Kyle Busch at 19.7 with a max of 35. This is at Richmond specifically. Over, uh, So we're looking at, since 2017, not counting 2019. So 2017, 2018, 2020, 2021. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with 18.7, and then Joey Logano with 15.3. Truex is in another dimension for at, at Richmond. This is his best track. He he doesn't want to go into Bristol needing to survive because Bristol's not a good track for him. So when it comes to Martin Truex Jr., I can see the reasoning for for going underweight on him, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to work out. I think Martin Truex Jr. is going to win this race. I do. So. And you're, you're witnessing right now me going back and forth with one of the best guys on the slate. My algorithm says he's going to win. I've been saying since the beginning of the playoffs that he's going to win this race. He starts third. There's no reason to go against him. Um, but if you want to justify it, if you want to take a stand on, on one of these higher guys, that's the point I would make. And that's what I would stick with for shorter flat tracks is that he's disappointed in pretty much everything except for Phoenix earlier this year that he won and um, the first Richmond race. So take that for what, what it's worth. Truex still a great play. There's no reason to, I don't, I don't, I, I say there's no reason to go against him. Overall, there's no reason to go against him. It's just whether you want to take that strategy or not. William Byron, he starts 14th. He's $9,900 on DraftKings. He's not great at this track type. He's not bad. He's not great. So, Looking over the last 2020 through 2021, William Byron has an average finish of 12.4 and an average running position 12.4 on this track type. He has never finished better than seventh. His best finish came this year at Richmond where he finished seventh. Now, does he have dominator potential? Fastest laps. He's never had more than seven. 
at a short flat track. Short flat tracks have a lot of laps. Zero laps led over the last two years for William Byron. I don't see the point in paying up for William Byron at $9,900 for a top 10 finish when he starts 14th. I, I just don't get it. Obviously, he's relatively safe. He should be. He could get a top five. I just... I'd rather go with a three dominator build than go with William Byron. That's that's how that's that's what it is. Christopher Belly starts tenth. He's nine thousand six hundred. Boy, did they price him up! So Christopher Bell has been solid on the flat tracks this year. Let's switch over to just twenty twenty one because he's in Joe Gibbs Racing equipment this year. Christopher Bell average running position of eight point seven. Um, this is the wrong chart. Christopher Bell, average running position of 7.6, average finish of 5.0. He finished um, ninth at Phoenix this year. He finished fourth at Richmond, and he finished second at Loudoun. Now, he starts 10th. He has top five upside for sure. Does that get him into the optimal lineup? Not without some dominator points. Does he get up there and lead, lead laps? Taking a look at fastest laps this year he had 10 at phoenix he had 11 at richmond he had 20 at loudon that's borderline if he gets 20 laps led on this track type over the last two years seven races zero laps led can he get up there and and lead yes can he finish top five yes i'd say top five is significantly more likely than christopher bell leading a significant portion of this race and I'm not sure we get a ton of fastest laps out of him. At $9,600, this is definitely a tournament play for me. If you're get, trying to get off Keselowski, who we'll talk about in a second, if you're trying to get off Keselowski, yes, you could go up to Bell. I don't hate it. I'd probably prefer Harvick over Bell. But um, Bell is strong as well. With a little bit of upside. $9,600, that's just tough. $9,600 tough. I could see it working out in a one dominator race. If Denny Hamlin goes out and leads 300 laps on Saturday night, there's a that's a better chance for Christopher Bell to get into the optimal as opposed to if Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano lead 150 laps apiece. So that's kind of where it's at with Bell. Brad Kozlowski, 9,300. He starts seventh. Love this play. And I think a lot of people, a lot of other people are going to as well. Yes, you can make the case for Keselowski that he's not himself right now. He's not finishing where we expect Brad Keselowski to finish. We're now in the playoffs. He's coming off a very good seventh place finish at Darlington. And let's not forget, short flat tracks are where Penske really excels. Like I said, Penske does not get fastest laps. Take a look at the last two years of short flat tracks. Number two, Brad Keselowski, 236. More than Harvick, more than Logano, more than Truex over seven races. This year he had 36 at Loudoun. He had 11 at Richmond, 14 at Phoenix. He had 44 at Richmond last year, which that was the race that he dominated. He led 192 laps in that race. He led 184 at Loudoun last year. He had 54 fastest laps. He had 47 fastest laps in the championship race at Phoenix last year. 30 in the first one. I think Kozlowski is going to be good for a top five finish and 20 to 30 fastest laps. Eh, 15 to 15 to 25, 15 to 30 fastest laps. Since 2017, he has the second most fastest laps at Richmond. At $9,300, how popular is he? I think I think he's a cash play, honestly. And does that give you the opportunity to go underweight on him in, in these big tournaments? Absolutely. Just because he dominated this race last year and only put up 44 fastest laps. 11 in the first Richmond race. If he has another dud like that and finishes 
10th. Keselowski's a great play. Don't get me wrong. My projections are going to be high on him, I, I assume. He has, you know, top three. He could win this race. But if we're talking strategy, you have to consider going underweight on Keselowski because he's probably going to be high 30% owned. Maybe. I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't, I haven't ran my, my projections for ownership yet. But he's, I think he's going to get quite a bit of exposure at that price, starting seventh. So I don't mind pivoting off of Kez down to Harvick, down to Bowman, or even pairing them to, with each other. But, you know, Kez is a uh, ton of upside. And again, don't overthink this. He, he's, he's still a top five car. Numbers say he should put up, you know, 15 to 30 fastest laps. Just... There, what I'm saying there is don't go if you want to take a strategy play don't go significantly underweight like go a little bit underweight and just pivot off pivot to someone else you don't need to go crazy underweight you need you don't need to fade Kozlowski at one of his best tracks that's that's all I'm saying there Kevin Harvick he starts fifth he's $9,100 this is intriguing definite tournament play here with Kevin Harvick Stuart Haas is good in the 750 package over the last two years as short flat tracks Harvick has the third most fastest laps. He has an average running position of 7.2, an average finish of 8.1. Looking just at this year's flat tracks. Believe it or not, Kevin Harvick has as many fastest laps as Kyle Larson. Almost as many fastest laps as Joey Logano. He has an average running position of 6.5, which is third best. Looking at where he got those uh, fastest laps. 11 at Phoenix, 11 at Richmond, and 44 at New Hampshire. I think Harvick's going to be good for 15, 20, at least, fastest laps on Saturday night. And if he goes under-owned, if people are going to Keselowski over him, people are going to Bowman over him, I'd rather be overweight on Kevin Harvick. Definite tournament play, definite, definite guy to be overweight on starting fifth. Alex Bowman, he starts 12th. He's $8,900. It'll be interesting to see how the DFS community responds to Alex Bowman winning this last race. He had a very good car. He had the fourth best average speed in that race. That wasn't normal. That We don't see that out of, out of Alex Bowman very often. You take a look at his numbers on short flat tracks over the last two years. Average running position to 12.4. Average finish of 11th. 42 fastest laps. Look at it this year. Alex Bowman, average running position 11.9. Over three races, average finish of 7.7. His finishes this year have... He won at Richmond. He was 13th at Phoenix and he was 9th at Loudoun. That's about what you can expect on a normal day from Alex Bowman. Did they figure something out here at Richmond last time? Possibly. Certainly could happen again. Would I rather pivot to Kevin Harvick starting fifth than Alex Bowman starting 12th? Yes, I would. That's just me. I could be wrong. Alex Bowman's also dead to me after last weekend. But I understand the upside seen with Alex Bowman. I don't see the continued and the constant... The, the race at Richmond here first time around this year from Alex Bowman is not normal. It's It sticks out like a sore thumb. You look at his fastest laps over the last seven races on this track type. One, he had 27 at Richmond first time this year. Loudon, he had one. Now, Phoenix this year, he had one. Richmond last year, he had six. Loudon last year, he had zero. Phoenix championship race last year, he had four. Phoenix the first race last year, he had three. Which one sticks out like a sore thumb? The Richmond race here. But yeah. Could Alex Bowman replicate that and maybe they figured something out? Yes. Does it? Is there enough confidence in Alex Bowman from me to be overweight on him this week and, and to have him as a tournament play? No. I honestly think he might go over on just because he starts 12th and people, people see the upside than that he won here. I'd rather be on the other side of that. That's just me, though. I understand why they do it. But that's just me. Ryan Blaney is a mystery at this racetrack. 
nobody can figure out why Ryan Blaney is not good at Richmond. And when I say not good, I mean not good. Not good at all. His best finish came here last time in April. He finished 11th. He looked decent at the start. Penske's very good at short flat tracks. Ryan Blaney isn't at Richmond. He's very good at New Hampshire. He's very good at Phoenix. He's very good at, if you want to throw in Martinsville, he's great at Martinsville. But for whatever reason, he just can't figure out Richmond. Now, I will note, I saw, I think, Ryan from iFantasy Race um, tweet that Blaney had Keselowski set up here at Richmond last time. Makes sense. He had his best race by far. You look at driver rating here, he had 87.5. Still only finished 11th, though. Still only had three fastest laps. And even when you even when you look at the tracks that Ryan Blaney's good at, short flat tracks, he had one fastest lap at Phoenix last year. He had nine in the finale. He had four at Loudoun. He had seven at Richmond. This year, he had 14 at Phoenix. He did have 31 at Loudoun. He also led 64 laps in that race. I don't, I don't see Ryan Blaney leading this race. I don't see him getting fastest laps. Starting eighth, I, I'd rather go Austin Dillon and Matt Benedetto. Yeah, if you want to pivot, go to Blaney. I, prove me wrong, Ryan Blaney. Have, a, have one good race at Richmond. A good race out of Ryan Blaney on Saturday night is an eighth-place finish. That would by far be his best run, and he starts eighth. There's no upside here. It's not, it's just not, I don't see it. I don't see, I don't see a point in taking Blaney at $8,600 in DraftKings. Maybe like one lineup, two lineups. But I think a lot of people, on that same token, I think a lot of people overvalue Ryan Blaney. I think he's going to get a higher ownership than he should. So I'd rather, I'd rather have zero Ryan Blaney and be completely underweight on him. To be honest with you, I'm, pu- I'm pulling up his ownership from the first race this year, which, like, there was no reason for Ryan Blaney to, um, starting seventh, to have any, any significant ownership. And he came in, Blaney was priced at 9100 and he was 13% owned. Now, that's not a ton. It's nowhere near the top. But 13% owned at $9,100 starting 7th, that tells me that people still overvalue Ryan Blaney at this racetrack. So at $8,600 starting 8th, he's probably going to be higher owned than that this weekend. Plus with the with the two recent wins. I don't, I, I don't see it. I can't see being over, like, maximum, I'm at 8% Ryan Blaney. And even then, it's, I'm probably going 5%. I yeah, that's what that's my take on Ryan Blaney. I'm sticking to it. Prove me wrong, Ryan Blaney. I I'll wait. I'm not gonna hold my breath though. Austin Dillon he starts 19th. He's eighty four hundred dollars. Solid play. Solid place differential play. I think it's hard to fit him in a lineup though, at that price. As weird as that sounds. So Austin Dillon here at Richmond, he's very good. As much as I don't like the guy, he's very good at Richmond. Top tens and four of the last five. 10th here earlier this year, 4th last year. He had the best car in this race last year. Take a look at short flats over the last two years. Austin Dillon, this is definitely his best short flat track. But, like I said, I, I think, I, I as weird as it sounds, I think Austin Dillon starting 19th at $8,400 is a tournament play because of how lineup builds are going to come this week. So, I think he's solid. I think he can challenge for a top 10. I bet him heavily to finish top 20 this week. And at $8,400, everyone's going to gravitate to Matt Benedetto starting 28th, who we'll get into now. So, Matt Benedetto he starts 28th. He's $8,100. He's very, Penske is very good at this track type. Last two years, short flat tracks, Matt Benedetto, average running position 11.9, average finish of 11.1. You don't see that type of consistency out of Matt Benedetto, except for the short flat tracks. He finished 11th at Loudoun this year. He finished 9th at Richmond. He finished 14th at Phoenix. 
Last year, he finished 13th at Phoenix. He finished 8th in the Phoenix finale. He finished 6th at Loudoun. His worst race last year was 17th at Richmond. 17th place finish, starting 28th, is still 11 place differential points. Cash play, all the way, $8,100. Tyler Reddick, he starts 11th, $7,900. I'm not seeing the upside. Just because he doesn't... Okay. Average finish over the last two years, short flat tracks. Tyler Reddick, 19.3. Average running position of 15.4. His best finish over that span is 10th at Loudoun last year. He finished 11th at Richmond last year. Fastest laps between one and five in all but one race. $7,900. I'm just not seeing it. It's kind of like, it's like Ryan Blaney. I'm not seeing it. Prove me wrong. And in the meantime, I'm going to be very underweight. I don't think Reddick's going to be super high owned, but I'm still going to be underweight. In high dollar, I'll have zero Reddick. <clears throat> Kurt Busch, he starts fourth. He's $7,700. I honestly, I don't have <clears throat> a great radar on Kurt Busch right now. <clears throat> he might end up being a, a tournament right up for me. Just because of how well that team is performing right now. Kurt Busch was a legitimate top three car last week at Darlington. There's no reason why he can't have a similar... He, he was a great car at Richmond. They've been great ever since Charlotte. So $7,700, if you can if you can get Kurt Busch to, to put up a top five finish and, I don't know, give me 15 fastest laps out of Kurt Busch. That could get him into the optimal. Is it likely? No. Is it possible? Um, I mean, anything's possible, but uh, I, I, I definitely think Kurt Busch is a tournament play. I don't, like I said, I haven't written my article yet. He could, he could end up being my tournament play this week, but, or one of my tournament plays, but uh, sorry, I'm looking up recent uh, fastest laps here because he had, a good chunk in the first race this season. So Kurt Busch had 27 in the first Richmond race this year. Going back to 2020, Kurt Busch had six in the second race of 2018. Kurt Busch had 10. In the first race of 2018, he had 28. Second race of 2017, he had eight. First race of 2017, he had one. So he's basically been between 10, eight, eight and 27 lately. It's tough. Definite tournament play. Like you can't, you can't not consider. I, I think you need, I think you need Kurt Busch exposure. And I think, I don't think it'd be awful to go overweight on the field at $7,700, um, depending on how your builds shake out. So, like, I think this would be a pivot off of Benedetto, if that makes sense. And then hoping hoping Benedetto has issues. That's where I'm at with Kurt Busch. So, Eric Amarola, this is his best track type by far. He starts ninth. He's $7,500. Definite tournament play. He won at New Hampshire this year. Let's take a look at... Recent short flat track races. Eric Amarola, average finish of 7.7. Average running position of 10.5. Do I think he's going to win again? No. But he finished 6th at Richmond earlier this year. Finished 11th at Phoenix. And that's after issues in the race. He won at New, he won at New Hampshire. Last year, he finished 8th at Richmond. He finished 7th at Loudoun. He finished 13th in the Phoenix finale, which nobody was racing except for the championship guys. And he finished 8th in the first Phoenix race last year. He starts 9th, $7,500 tournament play. All the way. I, I still don't think people value Eric Amarola on this track type. So, again, if I'm looking to pivot off of De Benedetto, I think a decent option is 
Eric Amarola or Kurt Busch in this price range. Cole Custer, I think he should be mid-teens. He's another guy that, you know, if you're looking to get off the Amarola chalk, I think is a decent play. Cole Custer who starts 21st, looking at the last two years of short flat track rib data. Like he's he's been up and down. But Custer finished ninth at Phoenix last year. He finished eighth at Loudoun, 14th here at Richmond last year. This year he struggled. He was running top 15, I think, at Phoenix and got put in the wall. That cost me a king of the speedway seat. Uh Richmond this year he was 23rd. Loudon, he was 14th. Definitely not a, like a guaranteed move upper, but tournament play for Custer, yes. I could see it. Ross Chastain, exact same thing. Like you're you're getting into this this section where you can make a case for any of them. Uh I'd rather go Almarola in this in in this range or Kurt Bush. Um and then, you know, the chalk cash play is to Benedetto. But uh Busher he starts eighteenth. He's just not great on the short flat tracks. So last two years on them. Chris Buescher has an average running position of 23.9, average finish of 22.6. He starts 18th at $7,000. I'd consider it at $6,000. i am not considering it at $7,000. His best finish on this track type over the last two years, seven races, is 17th. Nope. I'll, f- I'll completely fade Buescher and not think twice about it. Daniel Suarez, he starts 22nd. He's $6,900. Nice. Suarez... 21st at Phoenix this year, 16th at Richmond, 20th at Loudoun. I'm not seeing major upside here, and I really like Stenhouse or Eric Jones better. Um, if you want to pivot, I think I think Suarez is a decent pivot option. Richmond isn't a bad track for him. Um, when he was in good equipment, depending on who you ask, top 17 and. And seven of the last, seven of his eight starts here. The only bad one being the Gaunt Brothers race. So Suarez, yes, safe. I'd still rather go Stenhouse or Jones, to be honest with you. But Suarez could be a, a decent option as well. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Been waiting to talk for him for a, talk about him for a while. Last, so he did not do good at Phoenix last year. Looking at 2020 to 2021 short flat track data. Last seven races, average running position, 18.4. Average finish is 17.9. His other five races on short flat tracks, 14th, 18th, 12th, 17th, 15th. Pretty solid. Even better, we touched on it a little bit earlier. For some reason, he gets fastest laps here at Richmond on a regular basis. So since 2017, taking out 2019, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Averages the sixth most fastest laps at Richmond. He averages almost as many fastest laps as Kyle Busch. He averages more fastest laps than Joey Logano. Looking at, if you take away 2017, take away 2017 and just go 2018, skip 2019, hit 2020 and 2021, and go average fastest laps, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is at 26.8. For comparison, Martin Truex Jr. is at 40. Keselowski is at 23. Harvick's at 30. Denny Hamlin's at 36. Kyle Busch at 24. 2018, race number one at Richmond. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had 39 fastest laps. 2018, race number two, he had 19. 2020, he had 31. Earlier this year, he had 18. The last four relevant Richmond races, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has 18 or more fastest laps in every single one of them. You throw in the 2019 races, he had 20 fastest laps in the second one and only two in the first one. Five of the last six Richmond races, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has had 18 or more fastest laps each race. He starts 23rd. He has top 15 finishing potential and he seems to regularly get fastest laps. I love I love Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in DraftKings this weekend at sixty seven hundred dollars. Give me all that. Eric Jones starts thirty first, sixty six hundred dollars. Also like Eric Jones, talked about him quite a bit in my FanDuel article. Here's the thing with Eric Jones: 
Richard Petty Motorsports is pretty good at short flat tracks. You look at Bubba Wallace last year on short flat tracks. He finished 19th and 15th in the two Phoenix races. Finished 23rd at Loudoun. He finished 26th at Richmond. Bubba Wallace isn't that great here at Richmond. This year, Eric Jones, short flat tracks. 20th at Phoenix, 19th at Richmond, 19th at Loudoun. Eric Jones is a very safe cash game play. Don't mind it at all. Chase Briscoe, he starts 26th. He's $6,500. He's finished 22nd, 22nd, and 27th in the three um, short flat tracks. He starts 26th, so I think you need exposure. But I'd rather go Stenhouse. I'd rather go Jones. And I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather go Bubba Wallace. So if, I mean, you still need Briscoe exposure, but I just don't love Briscoe this week. I don't, I don't see the upside. I really don't. Bubba Wallace starts 27th. He's basically in a Gibbs car, so you have to like him. $6,300 for Bubba Wallace. This year on the short flats, he finished 16th at Phoenix, 26th at Richmond, and 26th at Loudoun. Last year on the short flats, he finished 19th at Phoenix, 15th at Phoenix 2, 23rd at Loudoun, and 26th at Richmond. It's not exactly confidence inspiring, but at the same time, it's Bubba Wallace. They're running better lately. I think he can challenge for a top 20. And starting 27th at only $6,300, you have to like the upside. So, I would, I, like I said, if you're in a salary pinch, you know, he's a good option here, but I'd still rather go Stenhouse. I'd, st- I'd still rather go Jones. I'd rather go Suarez. Um, and I think, I think Bubba and Briscoe are tied. That's where I'd put him. Michael McDowell, he starts 16th. He's $6,100. Uh, no. Looking at the last seven short flat track races for Michael McDowell. 25th, 27th, 23rd, 25th, 19th, 23rd, 16th. I just don't... I don't... No. I I don't see it. This year in the 750 package, he's been awful. Average running position of 24.9. Average finish of 26.5. I don't I don't see the point. Ryan Newman, he starts 24th. He's six thousand dollars on DraftKings. Short flat tracks, he has zero top twenties over the last two years. Should I leave it at that? Here at Richmond, specifically. 20th, 30th, see, this isn't 2019 um, Ryan Newman, though. I, I'd i rather be underweight on Newman than overweight. He proved me wrong last week at Darlington. Could have happened again, absolutely. I just don't. I just... The numbers tell me that Newman doesn't have top 20 potential this week or is more likely to finish outside the top 20 than inside. So that's about, yeah. Ryan Priest, he starts 20th. He's $5,800. I always like Ryan Priest as like a sleeper. He hasn't ran well at the short flats this year. He did finish 22nd at Loudoun. Last year on the short flats, he finished 18th at Phoenix. He finished 16th at Loudoun. He finished 20th at Richmond. I just don't, I hate the price. $5,800 starting 20th. That's his best finish ever here at Richmond. He's done it twice. I Not seeing the upside. Anthony Alfredo starts 30th, $5,600 on DraftKings. Pasta Gang, he finished 37th at Phoenix. He finished 31st at Richmond, and he finished 32nd at Loudoun. Rather go Corey LaJoy. Next one up. Corey LaJoy starts 25th. He's $5,500. He finished 21st at Richmond earlier this year. He finished 23rd at Loudoun. That team is just running so well. He has three straight top 20s. Obviously one of those, I mean, yes, crazy race at Indianapolis. Yes, Daytona. But the fact of the matter is 15th, 17th, 16th, 24th, 23rd, 22nd, 21st, 23rd. Had an issue at Pocono. Before that, 16th. 
Corey LaJoy starting 25th, $5,500. Tournament play once again. J.J. Yaley starting 37th, $5,300. I honestly really like J.J. Yaley this week. Probably too much. But the fact of the matter is, J.J. Yaley always, always outperforms his equipment. (sighs) Running the races for Rick Ware this year. He's finished 28th at Bristol Dirt, 25th at Martinsville, 26th at Talladega, 29th at Darlington, and 27th at Nashville. He, let me check what uh, what car he's in to make sure. He starts dead last, so you have to like that with, with Yaley. Starts dead last. He's in the 53, and it has... Um, it has sponsorship. We go back to last year with Yaley. Just trying to look. 34th here at Richmond. 29th at New Hampshire. This is back. He's still driving the 27th here. But just looking. Uh, 26th at Phoenix. 31st at Martinsville if you want to throw that in there. Uh, 29th at Loudon. I think I said that. Thirtieth at Phoenix in the in the finale. If JJ Yaley finishes top thirty, which honest, it's not crazy to think about. My computer's taking forever here. Um, it's not crazy to think about JJ Yaley actually finishing top thirty, just because of how much he he does he he doesn't overdrive his equipment. He's just if someone has an issue, he moves up. And that's just how it is. If three cars have an issue on on Saturday night, JJ Yaley could move up to because you have to you have to think between the back markers. So he's probably he's probably better than at least. Let me recount here. Yaley, Ware, Hauf, Gase, McLeod, and Blicky. There's six back markers, in my opinion. Maybe even Alfredo. You could throw in Alfredo, the way he's running on this track type this year. But we'll just go with the six. Say JJ Yaley's the first, the top of those. It means there's five behind him. It means JJ Yaley's finishing 32nd, and he's moving up if any car has an issue. Or if any driver has an issue. He might be behind BJ McLeod, but that's that's the only back marker that I would put above Yaley. I think Yaley's a very safe pick. I could if I if I have the chance to get LaJoy instead of Haley, I'm going with Joy. Um you know if But yeah, I I honestly I'd run I'd run Yaley like if I could do a lineup like this, if I could go Hamlin Truex. Kez, Benedetto, Stenhouse, and Yaley. Like, I don't see an issue with that lineup. Because to get to to get to LaJoy over Haley, you got to save two hundred dollars somewhere. With this, I'm not going Redick over Benedetto. I could I I'll, I'll think about going. You know. Almarola over De Benedetto, but at the same time, as a cash lineup, De Benedetto is the safest play here. Keselowski is an auto pick here, and then you got two Dominators in Hamlin and Truex. So then you're going off of Stenhouse, and you're coming down to Briscoe or Bubba Wallace. Obviously, it could work out. I do think I think Stenhouse, like we've talked about Stenhouse so much. So then you're probably going Bubba Wallace, and this is your. This would be this would be my cash lineup if I played, it, or this would be I'd consider this to be a cash lineup if I'm not going Yaley. But honestly, I'd go Yaley, I'd go Stenhouse, and I'd call it a day. Hamlin, Truex, Kez, De Benedetto, Stenhouse, Yaley. <sighs> to get to Logano, you'd have to save three hundred dollars off of this. And again, I don't mind going this. This would be a tournament. Line up for me. 
Logano, Truex, Kez, Almaroyla, Stenhouse, LaJoy. Don't hate it at all. Don't hate it at all. I think you can go, you know, Stenhouse and jump down to Eric Jones. And then you could go Truex and go to Hamlin. Legato, Hamlin, Keselowski, Almarola, Jones, LaJoy. Boom. That's where I'm at for Richmond. Like I said, don't overthink it. Even though I did a lot of I did a lot of arguing with myself on certain drivers there, but but you get the mindset. This is this is what we think about every week in, in the what ifs of of daily fantasy NASCAR. This happens all the time. What if what if Martin Truex Jr. has a has a loose wheel again? What if Denny Hamlin has a speeding penalty again? What if what if Larson dominates again? What if you know just how it goes? But as far as as lineup builds this week, I really like the strategy of going three big, maybe one middle and two low. Right here. I like this. I like I like Logano, Hamlin, Truex, two of those three. I like Keselowski or Harvick or Bell or Bowman in that range. And then an Almarola or a De Benedetto. And then someone in the mid sixes and and maybe someone, you know, between between Yaley and Newman to, to round it all off. That's that's where I'm at. So good luck this weekend. I know I'll be going live with uh with Brandon Cruz on his YouTube channel on Saturday. Uh, I think we're gonna shoot for mid afternoon sometime. Line isn't set, time isn't set. Make sure you check my article. Um but yeah, that's that's what we got for Richmond, and we'll see you back next week, or I'll see you back next week for Bristol and race number three in the final race of the first round of the playoffs. Um, So good luck Saturday night at Richmond. Hopefully we win a bunch of money and see it.